Hello and welcome to your quick news, current events, and stimulus update. We have both parties upping their package size. Stimulus package size, that is, get your mind out of the gutter. Joe Biden's advisors are pushing for lockdowns, or are they? We have some possible executive orders that Biden could whip out, and finally, we'll look at the latest COVID numbers. So let's jump right in. The director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota, Dr. Michael, Michael Osterholm. Jeez, that is, a, that is a long title. It sounds like a Daenerys Targaryen, breaker of chains, Osterholm breaker of infectious disease. Anyways, <laughs> he raised some concern after joining Biden's COVID-19 advisory team in an interview earlier this week. During that interview, he had referred to a plan that he, had, that he had argued for back in August. The plan was to lock down the country for four to six weeks and pass a bill that would cover all lost wages for everyone. This was quickly ate up by the media and the alarms went off saying Biden's new administration would implement these strict lockdowns. However, in an interview late last night, Dr. Michael Osterholm made it clear that he had not discussed the lockdown with the Biden team personally. A huge difference. He stated that there would not be a national consensus for the lockdown anyways, which I agree with. I thought that this was important to address because as part of our daily research here, we like to look at what some of the other news channels on YouTube are saying and the facts on many of the channels on this particular piece of news was off in many cases. So Biden's administ administration maintains that Biden is focused on the same platform that he campaigned on. This is a platform that would face quite a few hurdles if the Democrats do not win the Senate after the Georgia runoff election. If the GOP remains in control of the Senate, Joe Biden would have to pull some executive orders out of his hat to see his ultimate goals achieved. Two of these goals being student loan forgiveness and the federal minimum wage raise. The federal minimum wage has been $7.25 an hour since 2009, which comes out to roughly $15,000 a year for someone working 40 hours per week. Although the executive order to raise the minimum wage would only apply to those who work on government contracts. However, there are already eight states that have pledged to pay their workers $15 an hour in the coming years. These states are Florida, California, Connecticut, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York. Man, you know, I remember being like 14 or 15 years old working on a farm and I made below the minimum wage at that time. I made $6 an hour because there's a law where in certain cases on farms, you don't have to pay the full wage. I don't know exactly how it works, but I do not miss that. However, I was a janitor after that and that was an awesome job. That was a lot of fun. Anyways, another executive order Biden may need to pass to stay true to his platform is on student loan forgiveness. The legislation has already been proposed during Trump's term, but will not likely pass if the GOP remains in control of the Senate. Moving on, reported coronavirus cases are still on the rise and the experts are warning things will only become worse during the winter, especially with the holidays and group gatherings coming up soon. Many countries around the world have begun their lockdowns and many states in the U.S. have upped their endorsements for mask wearing. So what are your thoughts on America locking down again or even tighter than before? Do you think that we could handle this? Do you think all the toilet paper would be gone again? Let me know your thoughts on that. It seems that there needs to be a closer look at the economic and health effects of lockdowns in general. Like how many people are actually dying because of suicides or drug use or health issues because they're locked up at home unemployed? And then how does that compare to the number of people whose lives are saved because of the lockdowns? I don't have an opinion here, but it seems obvious to me that economists should be looking at this and researching and reporting on it. It's, we just need contrary opinions, it seems to me. Regardless if we lock down or not, the American people need some kind of stimulus package to help make this recovery a little bit quicker. I think we'll recover either way, but this will help make it a little bit faster. So let's check in on how our two favorite negotiators are doing. It would seem that Mitch has upped his proposal a modest $150 billion, while Nancy wants to restart negotiations at the previous $3.4 trillion number, basically throwing away five months of back and forth conversations. McConnell's bill, of course, does not have direct checks to the people, but it does carry that unemployment boost of $300 per week. Nancy, however, remains steadfast that she will not budge from her proposal. So we're going to see if this new $3.4 trillion tag sticks or if she's going to compromise before the Georgia runoff election and the official result for the 46th president.
So that's it for this Friday news update. Hit that subscribe button and crush the like button to let YouTube know that you, the people, want your news quick and with zero clickbait. And of course, have a profitable day.